Hi, welcome everyone. There are five distinct features in Chopin's writing style for piano that we will explore. His pianistic, improvisatory, lyrical dancing, narrative, and poetic nature. In any piano compositions of Chopin, we will always find a combination of these five elements. Now, let us take a look one by one of these distinct features. First, his pianistic nature. Chopin's earliest training in piano came from his mother, who was a piano teacher. Chopin did not continue his training through a formal academy, and because of that, he developed his technical approach in playing piano that produced a distinct style of his own. For his own use, he wrote a set of 12 etudes, published in 1833, and interestingly, the set was dedicated to Franz Liszt. Chopin was 23 years old and was already well known as a concert pianist at that time. Four years later, in 1837, Chopin published another set of 12 etudes to supplement the previous set. Piano is Chopin's instrument, and no other composer has such dedications more than Chopin to this instrument. Almost all of his output is for piano, not only in terms of the quantity, but for their artistic merit. Chopin had brought this instrument to a new horizon. Through his compositions, Chopin had made us realize what an incredible instrument the piano is. And we will take a journey together to visit these eye-opening legacies. I think it will be best to start our journey from his pianistic foundations, the etudes. Because the spotlight of this one is on ballad number four, opus 52, that is in F minor, here I have selected all the etudes of Chopin that are in F minor. Considering the key choice is always bearing a particular mood or atmosphere for the composers. To me, F minor is the color of the fall seasons, the combinations of orange, red, light brown, yellow, light green. Here is the first etude in F minor, opus 10, number nine. Let us observe how simple and neat Chopin constructed his melodies. Simplicity is at the heart of Chopin's music. Combining the scale and triadic steps, this is a work of a genius that has transformed such ordinary matters, scales and triads to become extraordinary beauties. Notice the huge span of intervals that the accompaniment encompasses. This accompaniment with such a huge stretch of the hand at the time was uncommon. But this is one of Chopin's hallmark in his pianistic style that many composers after him followed. Etude opus 25 number two shows another transformation of a simple matter into a music that expresses freedom and eloquence. From this initial motif, a gruppetto-like figurations to this cascading gruppetti. Lightness in touch and textures dominate Chopin's pianistic output. Etude F minor from Troy Etudes proves that the beauty in Chopin's melody comes from endless elaborations of simple idea. Chopin plays non-harmonic tones around the main notes, creating waves of chromaticisms with many unexpected turns.
The idiomatic writing means that the music is said to fit hands and fingers comfortably, even though it does not necessarily mean easy to play. It does the result far outweighs the effort. I believe Chopin's attitudes were his experiments in exploiting to the most the instrument piano. In achieving this goal, Chopin discovered most efficient and effective technical means. Edit Opus 10 number 11 is definitely uneasy to play, stretching the hands to the most and at the same time demands delicate touch. The seemingly thick writing of successive arpeggios challenges any pianist who performs this attitude to maintain a transparent texture, which is another trademark of Chopin pianistic style. Observe how simple the melodic line is and how rich its underlying harmony. Often the harmonic progression in Chopin music is modeled after that of Bach. Chopin studied extensively the music of J.S. Bach. I have a suspicion that all his attitudes were exercises for Chopin in writing harmonic progressions. Notice again here the neat melodic constructions scale-wise. The next two attitudes performed here show that Chopin fondly plays with the high and low registers of the piano. Attitude Opus 10 number 12, known the revolutionary attitude, has a simple melody, stepwise and short. His music is always very clear in its constructions, but Chopin decorates the firm structure with surface elegance and beauty. 
No longer we hear the rigid structures, but flexible lines waving up and down. The running notes left hand seem to embrace the high and low registers of the instruments. Edit Opus 25 number 11 also has a simple melody, but then we find the true genius of Chopin with the chromatic elaborations that accompany the melody. Chopin's pianistic style actively covers a wide span of the piano's registrations with running figurations, but without sounding overly thick. In this virtuosic example, Chopin pianistic style leans more toward brilliance of sound, the pearly articulations, and transparency of texture rather than weighty sound. The two sets of Opus 10 and Opus 25 become a solid pianistic foundation for all Chopin's piano compositions.
Now we come to his improvisatory nature. Most composers are great at improvisations, and so did Chopin, but again I mentioned that simplicity remains the spirit of Chopin's music. No matter how elaborate his music is, we find the sincerity of expressions. Indeed, his music is best performed when selfish gain is put aside. The next two pieces are showing this nature of sincerity and the demand of unpretentious execution. It's really for the sake of the purest beauty of sound. The impromptu number three was published as Opus 51. That is right before Opus 52, the fourth ballad. This third impromptu shows Chopin eloquently wrote embellishment along with hemiolas that often appear in his music. Both melodic lines and accompaniments are in graceful waves, waving up and down. Nocturne Opus 27 number two, and as well with the other nocturnes were inspired by the same genre by John Field. Many of his nocturnes are highly ornamented, and this one is a very good example. Look at the melody. I think a singer would not have a comfortable time singing this melody that leaps up and down freely. But how this melody passes through the delicate register colorations of the piano is amazing. A little warmer as it goes down to F4, and a little silvery as it goes up to B flat 5. Basically, this melody is a decorated triad of D flat major. No matter how complicated the ornaments may be feeling in the melody, they all demand effortless executions and utmost simplicity.
now we come to his lyrical nature. This lyrical nature is the opposite of the improvisatory nature. Instead of the pianistic melody that is weaving up and down continuously, here we almost can place words or lyric into his melody. The two nocturnes to be performed here are examples of this lyrical nature. The melodic line is simple, less active rhythmically and more vocally singable. This famous nocturne, Opus 9, number two, starts with three notes stepwise going down, then sequence fourth higher. Very simple, but yet it is at the master's hand that this initial simplicity is transformed into a very heartwarming, profound music. I believe it is the simplicity of melodic constructions that allows this music to carry a very captivating introverted reflections. The nocturne in C sharp minor bears the same melodic constructions. This has almost the same gestures as the nocturne in E flat major. But who would realize there is this underlying similarity because of how the two nocturnes appear very different one from the other. This proves how skillful and efficient Chopin is in developing simple motif. Now we go to a different melodic constructions in Prelude Opus 28, number six in B minor. The melody here is made of an arpeggio to try it up and down. What a very simple initial gestures, but Chopin's eloquently transform it into very evocative music. Chopin gives a haunting accompaniment made of repeated notes in rocking forth and back motion. And this accompaniment elusively turns to a counter melody as if it appears out of nowhere to heighten the haunting atmosphere.
Now we come to his dancing nature. Beside the simplicity, the dancing nature is also at the spirit of Chopin music, whether he explicitly titled his piece as a dance or not. For example, the one performed earlier, Opus 9 number 2, is titled Nocturne, but it waltzes throughout. The same waltz appear to accompany the main melody of Chopin's fourth ballad. Polonaise in G sharp minor is a good representative of the elegant, noble character of Polonaise. Chopin constantly wrote polonaises throughout his life, and as a matter of fact, some of Chopin's earliest works are the polonaises, such as this G sharp minor without opus number. It may come around 1824 when Chopin was only about 14 years old then. Polonaise in A major is often called the military due to its stately character. And again, in both polonaises performed here, the melodies are very simple. I believe the simplicity and the dancing quality in Chopin's music are the two elements that capture the hearts of so many listeners. Waltz in E minor was also from the composer's younger years, around 1830, but published posthumously in 1851 after Chopin's death. Chopin wrote up to 19 waltzes in total. This E minor waltz, even though titled as a dance, it reflects more the dancing of the soul rather than the dancing of the actual physical being. It would be quite easy to physically dance with this speedy music. Chopin's soul dances with the traditional dances of his homeland, the Polonaise and the Mazurka. Chopin had made the world fall in love with these two traditional dances from Poland. Chopin had stirred the movement called nationalism during the Romantic era. Mazurka in B flat major, opus 7 number 1, is an example of graceful and playful quality of a mazurka. It is often filled with the play of rhythm and accentuations, fresh and often with sudden jolts, but graceful always is the characteristic of a mazurka. The spirit of mazurka permeates in Chopin's music, like we find the mazurka in the middle sections of his C sharp minor played earlier. Chopin wrote about 57 mazurkas in total, a huge collection. This means mazurkas must bear a special place in his soul throughout his life.